Today's lockdown reading story is from Sean O'Burns, A Couple of Things Before the End. Thank you very much to Black Ink and to Sean for their permission to read from this really excellent collection of short stories. I love this book. It's great. The story today is called Homage to Barry Humphreys, and I think it requires an outfit. Tuesday, 15th of July, 1958. Departure day. Long morning worrying about my cabin trunk. Found my gloves. Mother awful on dock. Mother at me, asking me three times if I'd written to Murray. I did not write to Murray. I did not write to Murray. I have not seen Murray for six months, mother. Dear, oh my mother, I will not marry Murray Faulkner. And oh my mother, that means I will now be condemned to be all my life a sales girl at Foy's. Well, I am going to London. Dad said really nothing all day, but gave me ten pounds. Poor Dad. On board at 8pm. Mother and Dad, Uncle Donald and June, the McGraths, Andersons and my lovely Bib. Uncle Donald gave me a fountain pen. Bib went down with Daddy to throw streamers, all off ship at 10.30. I couldn't see Bibby, she was too small. Last thing I saw was Uncle Donald pointing and pointing at me or the air, I didn't know what, and then I thought, oh, it's the pen, he's saying use the pen. I did the pen back to him and he did it to me and then, thank goodness there was the horn and we started going. Wednesday, July 16th. Sad about my bib. Told myself, buck up, ship is nice. Cabin 116-117 E deck. Sharing with two girls, one Marion snores. Other girl, Eloise, very pretty. Going to England to marry English boy who she met at Imperial Wool. Broke strap on my sandal already, first day. There is a shop here, so let's see. Wore the black courts, not too bad. But you can get bags, shoes, manicures, everything on board, Eloise says. Then the sensation was, I saw passenger list first class. I knew nobody, of course, but in Tourist One, I saw Mr. and Mrs. B. Humphreys and thought it can't be Barry, but it was. In Main Hall, I saw a V thin man going into the public rooms with hair down to his shoulders. I knew who that was. I went up and he surprised. I think nervous, but nice. I think I was too gay with him and did the talking that my mother hates so. Had mother's voice in my head, of course, but I'm really thrilled to see him. It's just so wonderful. Another theatre person is here. And I said about the Tivoli arms and the man being so awful. And he agreed. And the whole company being so much worse since Reg took over. And Mr. D'Artagnan even more stinking and those songs. So it's beaut. We're talking away. And then comes his second wife, Rosalind, very tall, New Zealand. Where is Brenda? I don't know. I V surprised New Zealand because Barry was always so mean about New Zealand people. And Lou, he says, he's sorry, but Rosalind can only speak New Zealand dialect. He is mad. What a thing to say about your wife. She laughed. So maybe it's all right. Thursday, July 17th. Breakfast. Porridge. You can have eggs or toast or anchovy toast. Dinner. Cold meat and salad. Jam roly-poly. Pretty breezy on deck. Supper, grilled fish with chipped potatoes. Cards, Eloise. Saturday, July 19th, breezy, but a little less. Went to sports deck, didn't stay. Cards, Eloise. Sunday, July 20th, bored already, the ocean. Tuesday, July 22nd, tea with Eloise and Mr. and Mrs. Philip Highgate. Wednesday, July 23rd, breakfast, porridge. Went to try find Barry. Should explain to dear diary, as important perhaps for the future. Barry Humphreys is an actor, and he is an artist from Melbourne whom I know just a little, because I was with him as a fellow actor when the Union Theatre Society did its production of The Twelfth Night, and I was Olivia, and Barry was Orsino. He is V eccentric, and can be bad. People who warned me about Barry, Elizabeth Coates, Jenny Hewitt, that girl at Mrs. Hout's recital, but dear diary, it was Elizabeth who got into his car after rehearsals and went all the way to Camberwell. Elizabeth Coates from MLC. Most inconstant Elizabeth Coates. But dear diary, I am wandering from something more serious and getting stuck in the part of me that is not serious and needs to learn. The serious point I want to make is Barry Humphreys is an artist who is well known in Melbourne and Sydney and he had a show at the Union Art Gallery which had a bath and the bath had books in it but it was full of custard so that it looked like a person had been sick on the books. This is Dada, 
Barry Humphreys is a dad art person. He is a real artist, but also is a nice person who can stop being an artist occasionally and talk to people. And he has very long hair. Dada is the art movement that started in Europe, in Paris and Berlin after the Great War. Thursday, July 24th. Long talk with Barry about London and theatre. Problems of Australian theatre. Not enough people. I mean audience. So they're commercial. Only reviews. No classics. No cabaret. Barry says 40 theatres in just West End and sub clubs galore. Piccadilly and Soho. Greek Street the best. But there are others. Wish I could remember more. Cabaret, Kurt Weill. I don't know this, very European. He loves all things from Berlin. He knows a lot about music. I said Handel and Schubert, but he said Sarti. Painters Whistler, also Condor, is Australian. Zara in Zurich was the start of the really new time. But even when Picasso first exhibited, the critics said he was a madman, literally a madman, and people tried to hit the paintings with their canes. Supper in Tourist Class Lounge. Cards, Eloise. Friday, July 25th. 144 pounds, no, 154 pounds. Aunt E's, one and two shillings a week, West Hampstead. All RADA, 30 pounds, nine shillings. Hampstead, mm, all meals tickets. If I train to Edinburgh, Aunt W, ticket two shillings, one pence, and dinners. If I don't, that's two pounds, probably. To whom it may concern, no. To the manager, dear sir, please allow me to introduce myself. My name is, dear sir, I am a young actress wishing to inquire, inquiring as to the possibility of an audition. I am writing to inquire about auditions at your school. To the registrar, Royal Academy of Dramatic Art, Gower Street, London, WC1. Dear sir, I am a young actress wishing to inquire, inquiring as to the possibility of an audition at I am writing to inquire about auditions at your school and the dates upon which auditions are held. I wrote for information and a prospectus while still in Australia and you very kindly advised me to write to you once I had arrived in England. My address will be, is 27 Oldgate Road, West Hampstead, London, NW3. I enclose letters from Mr. R. Lawler, playwright and director of the Union Theatre Society at the, uni at the University of Melbourne and Mrs. Hugh Haupt, dramatic and elocution teacher Hawthorne Academy of Dramatic Arts. Tuesday, July 29th. Hot. Wrote to Andersons. Friday, August 1st. Crossing the line today, which is games, when you cross the equator. Sailors dressed up some in grass skirts. I was rather bashful to see Purser in grass skirt. He is a V-large person. We had Sing Song, O Jasper, and King Neptune came and threw landlubbers in the pool. Eloise in the thick of it, so I thought I'd better be a pal. Dunked twice. Water up nose a great deal. Headache. Eloise too tired for cards. I wrote to mother. Saturday, August 2nd. Rain. Barry at morning tea. We talked about Schubert and the leader, and especially El Koenig. He smokes too much. Where is Rosalind? She is the mystery wife. His hair is V strange, V black and straight. The most enormous eyes. He's like a Spanish person. Not attractive, I think. I forgot to say, dear diary, what Barry Humphreys famously did as Orsino in Twelfth Night. He did not like the play, so he became really V-bad. He was so awful and so naughty at Achuca, hiding Nigel, who played Feste's lute, and then making Orsino into a hunchback. People still ask me about it. I've had to tell oodles of people, and it's all true. It was at Achuca Mechanics Hall, and he got, I think, tights and put them up costume on his back and made the biggest hump horrible then entered for opening scene. If music be the food of love, play on. I was off stage left, saw Nigel really crimson upstage. He exited and said to Jim he refusing to play the lute or be in any scene or scene is. But Jim says we have to get to the end like this. It was a trial. Every time Cesario said my lord or Sino is here, I frowned and looked above him. Otherwise I knew it would be giggles. Pamela Craig said a Chuka people at intervals saying, I didn't know there was a humpback in this one. I think at the time half cast thought it amusing, half not, Jim not, Nigel V not. It was a sad finish though. Next day, no Barry, we all say, where is he? And found out Nigel telephoned to Ray and Barry ordered back to Melbourne. And we went up all of New South Wales with Nigel as Orsino and Nigel was awful. Worse than Barry, really. Monday, August 4th. Arrived Colombo, off at 8am in small boats, then cab. 
Saw many bungalows, then sari market. Eloise V determined bought three dresses and bangle, all for 40 rupees from tiniest little man. T. Gall Hotel. Eloise, Marion, Philip and Francis, Lieutenant Cullen and Mr. Newton Smith and his wife, I think Catherine Caroline. Back on board at 6.30. Pretty tired. Tuesday, August 5th. Nothing much. Played some quoits. Too hot all day. Wednesday, August 6th. Barry T on B Dick. B Deck. Rosalind has colic. They gave Barry chalky medicine for her. Thursday, August 7th. T Barry. Friday, August 8th. Barry. I wore the summer dress. Saturday, August 9th. Must write Dad. Costume for ball. Must cards Eloise. Be friendly. Sunday, August 10th. Ball. Ask Steward Cloth. Eloise, Guinevere. Marion, a Sultan. Me, Joan of Arc. Me, Ophelia? Sword? Paint? Monday, August 11th. Barry, luncheon. I said about the Debussy pagodes that it is too sweet and the Takata, and he thought that too. Rachmaninoff, Delius, but very English. Sati. Tuesday, August 12th. Barry. Wednesday, August 13th. Waited for Barry on wreck two hours. Wednesday later, very nice to me. Friday, August 15th, Barry. Sunday. Even though I know I have been wrong about him and I know it didn't mean anything, I knew what he was, but I didn't learn anything. I didn't know. I wanted so much to try and talk to him and be his friend, but it was more to me. And to him, I think. I can't understand him. He is the queerest person. There is something inside him bad and dead, and I think it is not fair, even though I know it's not his fault. He has been very maltreated by his mother and other people. It is only ever his feelings that matter, but those feelings are demons. He said he would come to the ball, but he came with Rosalind. Of course, you little fool, she is his wife, and she is pretty and taller. But he is mad. They came not in costumes at all, but awful old suits. He said to people he was Earl Page. And she was in a suit, just like his, said she was supposed to be Arthur Colwell. What is that supposed to be? None of the English people had ever heard of Earl Page or horrible Arthur Colwell. People were in such lovely costumes, and he didn't say a word to me. I couldn't even go near him or speak to him. There was such an awful feeling everywhere because they weren't in proper costumes, and because of his hair. And he kept going to the bar or the bar cart, not even dancing, just going to the bar cart. It was just horrible. And Philip said, I think that man's had enough. And I saw B take a whole bottle of wine from the bar cart. And grinning at people in a mad way, I said to Philip, please take it away from him. And Philip did and made Barry sit and eat something. But then people were just screaming, Barry, I don't know why, how could he be so drunk? He got a whole beef wellington from the captain's table and put it on the dance floor and trying to sing a song to it, no one understood. And then just yelling in that horrible vulgar voice, Earl Page really bawling it. And Philip and the other men got Barry by the arms and the whole room watching, and Rosalind trying to get the pieces of it in napkins off the floor, and the sailors and the purser were there, and Barry fell on the floor, and he was sick on the floor. It was absolutely horrible. Eloise took me back here, and I don't think I've ever cried so much. I don't know why. He's not mine. I'm not that stupid. I don't care if he's mad. I think he's better than other people, but he has to look after himself, and I don't think other people will look after him. I wish I could see him and could talk to him just once. Monday. I can't go to him because he's in the brig. I'm not his wife. Tuesday, August 19th. Nothing. The men say they'll get off at Port Said and wait for another ship. Wednesday, August 20th. I redid my cabin trunk, bought a hat, two shillings, one pence, cards, Eloise.